Greetings all. Um, this is a video that's geared towards uh, demonstrating the quick and dirty method of doing a recording of your part. So uh, I'll just kind of briefly describe what, what I'm going to do here. Uh, currently my setup is that I'm using my, my PC is being used as my playback device for the audio track and I'm also using the PC to record this video demonstration. So you're going to hear what I hear in my headphones. You're going to hear the playback track um, and you'll hear my horn being played. I'm actually going to be recording this on my iPad which you can see up there on the, in the corner, the big, the big part of the screen. And so I'm going to demonstrate for you uh, how to do this in GarageBand. Now this is a demonstration of uh, the technique of recording, not the quality. Okay, don't use my French horn playing as a uh, <laughs> example of high quality playing because it ain't. Uh, it's been about five years since I've touched the French horn, so it's not good. Okay, so I'm opening up my iPad now. The the software that I'm going to use on my iPad is called GarageBand. It's the um, I can't I don't know how to do the thing where you can you see my finger where it's pointing on the screen, but basically it's that it looks like a a, a hollow body electric guitar orange and red square icon. It's a free app in the App Store. If you own a Mac, uh, the iPad, or an iPhone, you can use this software. It's free from the App Store. And you can put this on any one of those devices and, and it all works very well uh, for that. And I, I do recommend highly that, uh, you know, if, if you want to do this quick and easy method, then that's the way to go, okay? So I, I've done some projects in, in GarageBand before, <clears throat> but, um, uh, it pulled up the home screen so you want to go to the upper right hand corner and hit that plus button that's going to create a new project and then it's going to pull up the, se the selections that you have okay so we want to make sure that up here in the middle it says tra live loops or tracks we want tracks that's going to be usually the defaults right there and it will default typically to audio recorder and even though we're recording instruments we don't want to select instruments we want to use the voice use that voice icon so click that okay and the reason for that is we're using the actual um, uh, microphone from the iPad itself to do the recording okay so now you can see that on mine because I'm recording this temp this demo and I'm using airplay to broadcast my iPad to the screen recording software uh, I've got that little um, using airplay warning message uh, I'm just gonna click OK so it's just saying it you're gonna have some lag possibly because of the the uh, airplay but um, if you're just recording this yourself you're not gonna have to deal with that because <clears throat> uh, you're not gonna have the airplay going into your computer to uh, record your screen capture okay so um, the first thing that you want to do is you want to set the volume recording level on your iPad now you can see right now mine's set almost to the middle okay I've already done some practice with this so I know that that's about where I need to set my vo my volume level for me recording my French horn part and the distance that the French horn is from the iPad which is about I don't know three feet in front of me um, I know I recommend in the um, written directions it's probably better uh, you get you usually get a better sound if it's a little bit further away from especially a brass instrument you want it further away and off to the side uh, so that you're not blowing your uh, horn or your bell right into the microphone you want to, to capture a little bit of the room ambiance just a little bit and not quite so much of the, be the direct out of the bell sound um, if you're a French horn player uh, you know you definitely want to be some reflection of uh, behind you of the sound coming from the wall I'm in my in my studio right now so I'm getting enough decent sound that that's okay if you're in if you if you choose to do a closet recording uh, definitely want to have if you're a French horn player you definitely want to put a piece of wood or something behind you just to reflect some of your sound towards the microphone because we do like to have a little bit of that that sound reflecting back into the recording but the closet's a great place to record because of course it's very quiet in there all the clothes absorb any echo so it's a really really dry recording and that's great um, uh, if you can fit yourself into a walk-in closet that's a that's a, that is a great place to record in the house it's very quiet okay so first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to set the volume levels on my <clears throat> iPad so as you can see as I'm speaking it's coming up to about the middle level now if I was recording a vocal track I know I would want to make it louder because uh, I want the signal as much in the middle of the reading as possible. Now you can see I've cranked it way up and my voice is pretty much capping that thing off right at the top. I mean right up to the red. And we don't want to be recording into the red. We want to we want to touch the yellow. It's okay if we touch the yellow. If we go into the 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 orange is fine, but we don't want to be in the red, okay? Now the other thing is uh yeah. So, and of course the best way to uh the best way to set your volume level is to play the loudest passes that you have 
and the softest passage. You want to make sure that it's picking up the softest passage, even if the, the softest passage, let's say it was just for demonstration purposes, even if it was just down there and it was the very, very softest that you were playing. Okay, and you can see that as I didn't talk, there was no movement of the, um, the, the meter at all. So that's probably a good volume level for at least capturing soft. It's at least gonna capture the minimum stuff. If I'm whispering like this, you can see that it's just barely picking up my whisper. Okay, so that's probably okay. But the main thing is we, we don't wanna, we wanna avoid distortion. That means staying out of that red area. So let me just play really loudly for a second. Okay, now that was bla bl blastingly loud, and of course I have it set so low that that's not a problem. Now I know from previous experience, if I have it up here, which is probably where it defaults to usually, it's going to be way too loud for the recording. Okay, you can see that was blasting up into the red. It's going to be super distorted and, and not sound good at all. I mean, as good as it's going to sound with me playing French horn anyways. So uh, I know... For me, on French horn, and, and, and in the room that I'm in, the, and the distance away I am from my iPad, that's about the good setting. Okay. Still a little too loud. Bring that back down. So that's probably pretty good. Uh, again, uh, <laughs> If you're a better player and have better control, you'll get probably better results uh, and everything. But that's the way to set the, the um, uh, volume level, recording level, or gain as we call it in the industry. Now, the other controls we have here, um, make sure you turn down the vocal hall all the way down, okay? And then the tone, just put it in the center. Um, and then compression, we want to turn that all the way down, okay? Uh, those are all effects. I'm not sure if it's added what, when you're recording or if it's just during the playback, but nevertheless I uh, turn all those down because I want to get your clean signal no no reverb no extra stuff no compression uh, I want to get your clean signal I will take care of all of that when I have everybody's parts together and I can mix everything from from scratch that way I will do any extra effects so make sure all that stuff is turned off okay and we have set our good volume level now I'm going to go to the playback issue uh, playback software okay so if you're doing this with your phone uh, you can have earbuds or headphones, and then you can. Uh, it's set up so that the the playback track is is monophonic, so it's the, it's the same in the right and the left channel. So if you want to do that with one of your headphones, so that you can hear your sound better, that's fine. Uh, you'll still hear the exact same thing out of your left ear, or whichever way you want to do that for your instrument. Um, I, I mean, I can hear myself because of the my microphone is going into the. Uh, the speaker so I can hear myself through the headphones so that's why I'm leaving it this way for myself okay so one of the things about the GarageBand software is it's designed and geared towards songwriters so it's uh, basically set up so that it is uh, going to give you uh, groups of eight measures at a time as, as you would write a song okay so we have to change the setting here on that so we're going to go to the uh, you see the you can see up on the top one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The, that's showing you the measures, and that's the setup for the recording right now. It's gonna, it would record only eight measures of time, okay? And basically, whatever the metronome settings is for um, GarageBand. Now, the track that I've sent you is really a. There's no set tempo. It, it, it fluctuates. It's a, it's a live recording. I set the click track to the live recording of uh, the group, so. Uh, there is a lot of variation, so you can't just p record to a straight-up click track. It, you just need to follow what's in there. Um, so that really doesn't matter how you have your metronome set up. Uh, but we want to hit that plus sign at the end of that grid line. Okay. Now, it's going to bring up this little menu of song sessions. Okay, Section A. Again, it defaults usually to eight measures because it's geared towards songwriters. So what we want to do is we want to hit that eight bars, and then we're going to manually add the number of measures we need. Now, again, the setup in the iPad right now for GarageBand is default to 4-4 and I think the time signature is usually 120 or 110 so uh, what we want to do is we want to make sure we have enough time in our um, settings that we can play the whole piece through without stopping and starting okay so um, So you can you can set it to automatic as I just did with that switch, 
Okay? Or if you want to do it this way, you can use the manual buttons and you can scroll up. Now I think the piece has one, two, one, three. There's 103 measures in the, in the music. It's 2-4. Okay, and again, so uh, if we had at least 55 measures here, uh, that that would in four four that would a uh, four four that would give us plenty of time to record. And then we want to add a few measures um, because we want to have some time for the pre-roll to start, uh, and then the count off, and then the piece. So <clears throat> I'm just going to go to 65 just to be sure. Okay, so again, that's 65 times four because the the iPad's thinking it's four four time. It's fine. And then we're good, okay. And then now you can see the uh, the light, the layout on top went all the way across to 60, uh, 61. I can see, and I think we set it to sixty five, okay. So now I'm ready to record uh, the play. Just and again, it's just going to hear my French horn from the room. That's it. Uh, I'm playing back over my computer through the headphones. Uh, and like I said, if you do this with your phone, you play back with your earbuds and your phone, and then you'll have your your separate device recording this way, okay. So I'm going to start. First thing you have to do uh, is hit record on the iPad, and then you go and hit play on your playback device. Ah. Okay. And we heard the metronome. You could hear the metronome recording through, uh, it's going to click at you, and it's going to play through the speakers. So we want to turn off the metronome, because we don't want to hear any, again, we just, we just want your sound uh, from from your playing and nothing else okay so let's go back and do that again now I think um, click that little back arrow it should start at the very beginning it is going to give you a four click count off so you do it you there's ways to set that and get rid of that but it's fine uh, four counts of click is fine it, you get enough time to um, move to start your playback device again the timing of all this is not important uh, the most important thing when you're when you're ready is that once you get everything set up uh, if you could please just do the the count off you'll hear the four beeps which gives you the tempo and then you can say one three one two breathe and then start playing at letter uh, the beginning of the piece if you have if you have uh, the notes on the downbeat um, <coughs> that will just save me ma many hours of time of trying to line everybody's recordings up if I have you count off at, at your track uh, at the beginning of your track like that that will very very uh, help me uh, very much because again if I do this with 80 people I'm gonna have many hours of moving stuff around and that will save me uh, even a couple of minutes on each track of lining things up will save me many hours of time overall so I appreciate you helping me counting yourself off like that um, alright so the iPad microphone level is set well we've got that ready to go we've got we added the, enough time to record the whole entire piece all the way across okay and so we're ready to go. So I'm going to hit record on the iPad, and then I'm going to go to my PC, and I'm going to hit playback on my device, which I'm using Groove right now to play back on my PC. And I will, I'm will. i just going to record the first couple uh, strains uh, so I don't torture you all too much. All right, here we go. torture of <coughs> excuse me of uh, hearing me try to hack my way through the French horn part uh, put that off to the side there okay so the last bit of this <coughs> assuming you play far far better than that and you have a, a, a performance that is acceptable acceptable to you I would not submit that that is not acceptable for me at all uh, but uh, anyways just as a demonstration of how to do this Okay, so we've recorded our track, and now uh, we need to share it with me so you can upload it to the Dropbox. 
Um, so uh, there's a couple of ways. Uh, well, basically, the, this is the easiest thing I think to do. So um, on the we're on the recent screen. Um, I'm going to hold down uh, the icon for the song we just did, and I want to rename it because this is this is the time to do that. So uh, we want to have the the part. So let's see, my part is dying moose. Uh, well, and I'm playing second dying moose. I should put that first. So this is two second dying moose. With pleasure. I'm not making a French horn joke about being dying moose. I just, I know I sound like a dying moose on that recording, and that's okay. All right, so now I've renamed the file in the format that I, I asked you for. Uh, that's just to help, again, when I get all the files, I can organize them into parts and sections and so forth. So I appreciate you following that filing con uh, the file naming convention I asked for. Um, okay, so now I want to go to the Browse menu. And then I want to select, uh, hit the select uh, icon up in the upper right and I'm gonna select my dying moose part for that and I want to share it so you see when I selected it uh, it allowed me to it pulled up the, me the menu down at the bottom share duplicate move delete more okay so I want to share that okay I want to share the song again there's nothing else in your recording if you just did the the one track there's nothing else so that you can just share the song as is okay now we're gonna get the choices of Quality again. I need. I would prefer the wave uncompressed wave file. Okay, um, so that would be the the preferred method uh, for you to send that to me. And it's and it uh, mine's defaulted to forty four one kilohertz at sixteen bits. Now, if you've used your iPad to record before, you may have a higher setting. It may be up to uh, forty eight and twenty four bit. That's fine. I can I can accept higher qualities. That's that's totally fine. Um, uh, just uh, don't send me any of these uh, upper ones that are lossy, the low quality, medium, or high, or highest iTunes Plus. None of that. That that's all loss. The, the the it compresses the file and it changes the sound quality and it's not good. So make sure you send me the uh, specifically the wave file. Wave file. Okay, and then you hit share. Okay, so um, now this gives you a number of ways to do it. Uh, you can use. Uh, obviously, Google Drive, for example, if you it, it will it will just pop it into your Google Drive if you're logged in. Um, if you want to email it to yourself, I always that's typically how I do it. I will select email so that it will open up my Gmail account, and then I will um, email it to myself. That kind of gives me a backup in the cloud. Okay, so it's just going to send it to me. Okay, and then blue blah blue. You don't have to type in text, but I just like to, I always type in text when I'm sending a file straight up like that just to make sure it gets there. Okay, and I can send it to myself. Okay. And then hit the send button. Okay, and now it's emailing me that. WAV file. Now, honestly, if if you're emailing a WAV file, it's way too big. It's going to be way too big. So what what I know with Gmail, it's going to actually put it into the, the Google Drive anyways, and then I can access it uh, that way. It it will set up a little file folder for it in Gmail because it's not going to send a full WAV file. It's too big. Um, but uh, yeah, we when you share it, you can also share it like. Um, let's see if I do that again. Uh, Dropbox is an option. Usually. Yeah, you have you know, like Dropbox. Now I know, for for example, it's going to tell me I can't because um, I'm I'm doing the free Dropbox and I have my laptop, my phone, and my PC set up, and it's going to say um, my my device limited is my device limit is reached. But um, yeah, if your iPad is part of your Dropbox uh, configuration, then it'll it'll save it there. And usually, even with a free version of Dropbox, there's plenty of space for a, a couple of WAV files like that. Uh, before you hit your, I think it's three gigabytes. I'm not sure, but uh, anyways, um, so that's the the easy way to record uh, and export your file and send it to me in a format that is acceptable. Um, 
So again, the important thing is the wave file. Name it, n name it in my convention, please, so that it's easier for me to deal with them because I'm going to have 80 files or so to deal with, and that will make a, my life a lot easier. Um, and uh, I'm going to do a couple other videos. I'm going to do a video where I demonstrate in using GarageBand only. So I'll do a, a, if you want to do multi-tracking and like obviously the 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 recording I just made was not good. Uh, I if I probably could actually play at least the upbeats at an acceptable level if I went through and multi-tracked and made sure I got each one just right. Um, uh, I have actually better ways, uh, a better series on videos of, of me doing that with other programs, but uh, I will demonstrate a little bit of how to do that with GarageBand on the next video. Alright, thanks for watching and, and good luck. One, three, one, two. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.